Welcome to the Model Health Show. This is fitness and nutrition expert Sean Stevenson here with my amazing, beautiful posing, getting your Vogue on, oh, <laughs> co-host and producer of the Model Health Show, Jade <laughs> Perel. What's up, Jade? What's up, Sean? How are you today? Today, I am magnetogenic. Oh, wow. That's a stacked so up word like that? right there. You like that? Right. I like it. What's that mean? So, the suffix genic means <laughs> causing, right? Ooh, okay. So, right. I'm causing magnetic energy everywhere I go. <laughs> mm, I like that. Yeah. So, you're going to do the etymology. You're going to yeah. break down to the root. That's right. Well, to you the know, origins. I learn from the master. <laughs> break things down. I like that. Dissect them. Get to the root. I dig it. Yeah. The root. The root. You get it? I dig it. The root. Uh, like, Anyways, oh, everybody, yeah. thank you so much for You're tuning so into the deep. show today. We've got an amazing <laughs> show lined up for you. So today we're going to be talking about the truth. We're going to talk about the truth about coconut oil. Plus, we're going to cover 20 healthy things that you can do with coconut oil. Mm. Now, we're going to go through some of the controversy, okay? some of the potential pros and cons of this uh, very historical food, you know, something that's been utilized for centuries now, uh, but there's a lot of misinformation out there. And I was floored. Like, I could not believe. And my wife was like, you're such a nerd. When I was, like, showing her, I was like, look at this study. Can right, you believe right. this? Like, what are, they, what are they thinking? There's so much we so, don't know. So <laughs> there's a lot of misinformation. So we're going to cover all of that today. And you're going to get a really great definitive guide on this food and also uh, how it goes beyond being a food in many different ways and some things that are probably just going to blow your mind. But before we do that, I want to give a quick shout out to our show sponsor, Onnit.com. Head over to onnit.com forward slash model for 10% off all of your health and human performance supplements. MCT oil. Mm-hmm. MCT oil is derived from coconut and or palm oil typically. And one of the reasons that I love MCT oil is that it has a thermogenic effect, mm-hmm. right? Which is the ability to positively alter your metabolism, all right? So that's just, and that's just one well, thing. Well, I call that warming your spirit. Warm, <laughs> warm. So MCTs are also absorbed more, more easily mm-hmm. than a typical food, foodstuffs, you know, than chicken, <laughs> which is how my son, my older son, he's... 16 now, but when he was a kid, he would say chicken, like for the longest. And he longest. loves that you're sharing that story, <laughs> I'm sure. But it's because the MCTs are small, and basically they bypass the normal digestion and go directly to the liver where they utilize almost instantly for energy, which is just really fascinating. Plus, the MCTs are smaller, so they can permeate our cell membranes more easily, and so it doesn't require special enzymes and all these different usual processes to try to abs- extract some energy from our food, you, which this is just say, an amazing process yeah. in and of itself. If we really think about it, yeah. when I'm looking at you mm-hmm. right now, I'm seeing the, the food that you've eaten, oh, right? Man. And yeah. the and the nutrients that your body has been able to extract from that. I'm so glad I ate well. Just <laughs> fascinating, yeah. right? Like we yeah. are a result of that and we get to kind of mm. like our bodies are a printout, yeah. right? It's a printout. You get a receipt based on Ooh. the food that you choose to invest in. I love that. Right? And sometimes we don't actually think about just how powerful that is and how much of a gift mm. that we actually have being able to make those decisions. You know, whereas our ancestors, right. you really think about it, the, the, the choosing wasn't as easy, mm-hmm. you know. And today we have such a, a great opportunity to, to make these different choices. But also there is so much more distraction. There's so much that can take us away from the great things that we have access to, you know, because uh, fruity pebbles, you know, fruity pebbles do exist. (laughs) So just being more aware of that. (laughs) And plus MCTs are supportive of your gut environment, especially since they have the capability to combat harmful bacteria, viruses, fungi, fungi, (laughs) (laughs) and parasites. Yeah. Yeah. So head over there, check them out. I use the emulsified mm-hmm. MCT oils, which are basically like creamers for your coffees or teas. I had that today with Lion's Mane Tea, mm-hmm. the strawberry MCT oil. Mm-hmm. It is so Super good, good. so good. good, and it's good for you. So head over, check them out, onit.com forward slash model. They've got vanilla. They've got coconut. They've got a pumpkin new flavor. Spice. I was gonna bring that no, one not out. pumpkin spice. I know, that was I know seasonal. The one you're talking about. Cinnamon swirl. Exactly. Cinnamon swirl. swirl. All right. Just swirl along. Just swirl along. <laughs> Is that the cabbage patch? I don't you're know, doing? but it's swirly. Cabbage swirly? It's cinnamon Some swirly. Some dance you just did. That's what it is. Lots of great flavors. <laughs> Plus, they've got the hemp force protein, mm-hmm. the recovery pro- protein, which I'm a huge fan of. 
Check them out. Onit.com forward slash model for 10% off. Now let's get to the iTunes review of the week. Well, this one is terrific. It's five stars. It says, love hearing Sean and Jade's energy. When I need a pick-me-up during the day, I turn to the Model Health Show. Sean and Jade have such magnetic personalities, and the show puts me at a higher energy level once I'm done. I turned one of my coworkers on to the show, and we will share new things that we've learned from the show. I also appreciate the non-judgment base that they have towards your current health and lifestyle situations. And I just love the way Sean pokes fun at unhealthy foods at unhealthy foods and habits, et cetera. It makes you laugh at the stuff instead of beating yourself up. And, and by the way, I read through some of the comments and want to send a big high five all the way from Ohio, Jade. You rock. Awesome. Awesome. Mm-hmm. I love Shout that. Shout out to Ann, too, in that one. On so many levels. Oh, yeah. And thank you so much for bringing up uh, the, the non-judgment zone, mm-hmm. you know, because here it's inclusive. You know, we're breaking down borders. We're breaking down walls. And all of us are really in this together. And there is no uh, no one person or one entity has the the rights to to withhold this information, you know. So everybody's included, and I'm so happy that you pointed that out. And some of the stuff we do is just, <laughs> you know, it is silly, but at the same time, we still have the right to do it. Yeah. And it's all about realizing within ourselves that we have the ability to make a choice, mm-hmm. you know. And you know, being a student of the words, you know, decision. Being from the root day, meaning from, and kaidir, which means to cut. When you make a real decision about something, whether it's uh, getting out of a terrible relationship mm-hmm. or quitting smoking, you actually cut away the possibility of ever doing that thing again. Like the decision is made. Mm-hmm. So this process is really about getting ourselves to the place where we make the decision. The decision can happen instantly for right. any of us. Right. But I promise you it's so much easier when you feel included. Absolutely. It's so much easier when Absolutely. you feel loved and supported. So. Thank you so much for leaving that review. And everybody, thank you for leaving these reviews over on iTunes. Keep them coming. If you haven't left the review yet, head over there. Do it now. Just pause. I will be here when you get back. That's right. We won't be severing you. (laughs) We're not going to cut off our connection. And make sure that you also hit the subscribe button so you stay up to date with the shows because we're also dropping a bonus episode every month, the very first Monday of each month. Just in case you didn't know that yet, you didn't get the memo. (laughs) So, of course, we drop one episode each week, a master class. And today's master class is definitely that. Mm -hmm. But make sure that you're subscribed to the show and be ready, whether it's on Spotify, which we're on Spotify now, one of the few podcasts on there, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, uh, obviously iTunes. So make sure to check us out. Hit the subscribe button. Right? Subscribe everywhere. That's right. (laughs) Everywhere now. You got to echo everywhere. Everywhere. Now. Let's get to our topic of the day. Today we're talking about the pros and cons of coconut oil. We're covering the truth, mm-hmm. the truth about coconut oil, plus 20 ways, 20 things that you can use coconut oil for, mm-hmm. which I think you're going to be <laughs> surprised. Slow down, Jay. We're said, not well, there yet. Slow when down. When I think of all the wonderful <laughs> uses I have now and to know that there's like a list of 20 uh-huh. and probably more, I'm like, ka Yes, yes. <laughs> Such a great investment. So we're going to start with the brief history of coconut. Nice. Now, this is, again, this is a very brief history because according to the Cambridge World History of Food, unfortunately, it's not possible to provide as much information as one might want on the history of coconut because of the inability, because of the humidity and the heat where it's typically found to not get a good fossil going. All right, so there's not a definitive date as to how long humans have been interacting or these coconuts have been growing and also humans have been interacting with it. But we do know that it has been a long time, uh, many thousands of years for sure. Now, the term itself, coconut, is derived from the 16th century Portuguese and Spanish word coco, meaning meaning head or skull. All right. Because if you, you right, right, the little look, it's kind of like this furry little <laughs> yeah. head. It's got the three holes or whatever, and the, the little, little holes yeah. in there. Kind of can give you a resemblance exactly. of some human features. The pre-Wilson. Now, <laughs> right. <laughs> now, the origins of the coconut are still under debate as well. The coconut tree is believed to have origins in the Americas because of their prevalence. Uh, they're predating European contact. Mm-hmm. So this was already going on predating that time period. But on the other side, it's generally been accepted that the coconut originated in the Indian Indonesia region okay, and float distributed itself I can see that right. <laughs> around the world by riding ocean currents. Now, yeah. that 
is it necessarily fully logical? <laughs> but then again, what is? Right. Right. So there's these kind of two Please camps. It's just a, a debate going on where mm-hmm. it actually originates from. But the bottom line is it's delicious. <laughs> and speaking of um, the Wilson analogy, Tom right. Hanks cast away. There was actually a scene in that movie where he was. You know, he's he's in a bad spot, <laughs> yeah. right? And he's trying, he, coconut, he's got these coconuts. This is going to be a food source. And he's like really needing something right now. And he's trying to get the coconuts open. And I remember him, he was like launching them at a wall. And you could see the actual fatigue in that scene. Like this dude was tired of throwing those coconuts. And they just simply would not open. And he finally gets one open on this rock. And, he, you know, he actually gets a sharp rock on accident because he's like beating it all these different ways gets it open and basically spills most of the coconut water out yeah. and takes like, there's like two drops that come out, but then he, it gives him enough encouragement to figure it out. Yeah. And then he finally opens it up. It's just like such it a such relief a scene. scene yeah. Like, Oh yeah, he's going to live. Right. Right. I mean, I was right there on edge with him. Like, please help him. <laughs> now coconuts are the coconut trees themselves are pretty unique in the fact that they actually pr- uh, produce fruits all year round okay which is a really unique thing about them but now so it's just a little wonder that you know when you get certain fruit you're like i probably there are no strawberries in december (laughs) you know and so you wonder if that may be throwing off some of the benefit and the new you know the opportunity there but to know that it's year round you know because i even asked that about avocados so yeah i'm really that's cool you know keep into consideration when you say that that this is from regions of the of the world where it's a conditions for that tree to like that. fruit mm-hmm. throughout the year to create fruits and flowers. At the same time, where's your lineage, though? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. you got to keep that in mind, too. Yeah. Because if you're like, you're on some Viking <laughs> genetics, <laughs> you know, be, yeah, maybe yeah. coconut oil might not be the very, very best thing ever. That makes but sense. what you're going to learn today is that there's a lot of ways to utilize this food. And even using it in different spot cases, you can garner a lot of benefit. But this is one of the things I'm so glad that you actually mm-hmm. said that because we have to keep all of this in perspective right. because we need to do what's best for us mm-hmm. where we are right now. And even that can change. Right. So let's shift gears now. So that's just a little tiny little snapshot brief history how you of coconut. Open us up to that knowledge. And now let's shift gears and talk about the coconut oil itself and how it's actually made. So we've all seen probably today, and this is something so crazy, like coconut water. Mm -hmm. And I think I've been having coconut water almost a decade and a half now before it was hot. Right. I was like all these companies and it's just like everywhere now, Mm -hmm. but we would get the real, you know, the young, um, fresh coconuts and we open those up and, and consume the coconut water. But those are the quote young coconuts. So, but as the coconuts mature, that's where we're going to crack them open. So they're cracked open. And then the meat is extracted using a coconut grater. From there, that shredded coconut meat is then dried slowly using fire, sunlight, or kilns to create the dried meat that is used to extract coconut oil. Mm. And that is called copra, all right? So that product that's left. And so this is a slow drying process. You're not high heating the coconut. This is a slow process to, to get this end product that we want, the virgin coconut oil. Now, the copper is then pressed, producing the coconut oil. So it's pressed out. They actually put into, uh, there's different devices to go about this. There's some kind of, quote, primitive versions, and there's some really uh, fancy, uh, high-tech ways of pressing that oil out. And then this method is for creating the best form of coconut oil, which is the virgin coconut oil. However, some conventional manufacturers then use additional methods to maximize the yield or throughout this process mm-hmm. to maximize the yield, extend shelf life, right. manipulate right. color and smell, and other things that diminish the overall benefits of the coconut oil. Mm-hmm. So all coconut oil out there on the shelves is not the same. You have to understand that today. One of those methods that they use is utilizing hexane. And hexane, which is, this is a significant component of gasoline, okay. all right, to, <laughs> no to process the coconut oil. Uh-huh. Also, there's a standard practice of RBD, which is refining, bleaching, and deodorizing the coconut oil. That doesn't sound too good. Mm-mm. All right, you want to yeah, bleach it? <laughs> right. RBD. Well, when I said RBD, <laughs> I knew you was going to go there. I knew you was going to go there. You can't trust a pressed coconut. And a smile. <laughs> <laughs> With hexa, what's it called? Also, hexane. Hexane. <laughs> also, 
partially or fully hydrogenate the coconut oil. And being that coconut oil contains about 6% monounsaturated fat and 2% polyunsaturated fats, the majority of those through the hydrogenation process will be transformed into trans fatty acids. Mm -hmm. Not to so good stuff. No, no. So what we really want to look out for is virgin unrefined coconut oil, which is ideal for the benefits that you're going to learn about today. Right. And so we're going to shift gears now and really dive in and talk about some of these health benefits, starting with the high saturated fat content. Wouldn't coconut oil contribute to faster weight gain? You would think. Now, in our research, and of course, we talked about this multiple times on the show and the importance of dietary fats and just how there's a really big issue with lexicon, right? There's an issue with the words that we use because when you hear fats, and I know that I was indoctrinated with this, and I know that it's probably still there within you mm -hmm. as you're listening right now, that fat means you're going to add fat to your body. You have to be careful about those fats because we translated like, if I eat fat, it will make me fat. This fat will end up as fat on my body, which just simply doesn't work like that. The analogy we use is like eating blueberries is going to make you blue. <laughs> it just simply doesn't translate like that. We really should be calling dietary fat something different. If we're going to call fat on our body, you know, this body fat, right. if we're going to call that fat, we should call what's in food something different. We should okay. call it energy sure. or lipids, okay. right? Something right, different, right? right? right we right. should we should have carbohydrates, proteins, and energy, I like that. right? I like and so that. we can start to see this more clearly, but mm -hmm. today still, and you've got to put those glasses on to be able to see that that way when you're presented with this information because fats have been villainized, but m most of that is unjust, mm -hmm. and you'll find that out today. So I was talking about the misinformation out there, and I've got to share this with you guys because it just blew my mind. So there was this really interesting article that I came across that it's like one of the top articles coming up on Google when in regards to the health benefits of coconut oil. And it's just really going hard on the fact that it's not good for you. Wow. And so one of their points states that, and I'm going to read this directly. Okay. Coconut oil contains high amounts of fat, which may be a big concern for people struggling to lose excess body weight. Try to use this oil as low as possible in your diet or else you will turn overweight in just a few days. <laughs> it will make you vulnerable to several serious health problems. And then they link to a study that totally discredits what they said. <laughs> All right. I actually, it's just they like, just did you even read this? Yeah, it's a communication did you even, thing. <laughs> so check this out. And this was a study from the International Journal of Obesity and Related Metabolic Disorders. And it found that this is, in fact, the opposite. When we're talking about <laughs> losing weight. And so what they concluded was that there's actually a reduction, a significant reduction in body fat when you consume coconut oil. So breaking this down, which this is what I really want you to be able to walk away with today, when talking about how coconut oil is effective for fat loss and what this study reveals, it's first important to understand something called uncoupling protein. All right, uncoupling protein. Specifically, we're going to talk about uncoupling protein 1, or UCP1, also known as thermogenin. Now, scientists have long since observed the thermogenic activity in brown adipose tissue. Mm -hmm. This is a type of fat that actually burns fat. It functions very much like muscle does. And we've talked about this in different episodes of the show, one of them being the benefits of cold thermogenesis, mm -hmm. because cold exposure uh, contributes to your body's elevation of creating more brown adipose tissue, which intrinsically elevates your metabolic power in it's, your body. Yeah, it adds some folks to the team. We're working together on this. <laughs> and so this understanding about brown adipose tissue, this eventually led to the discovery of uncoupling protein. Now, brown adipose tissue is unique in that it was found to have elevated levels of mitochondrial respiration. And the mitochondria density of brown adipose tissue is, is what actually gives it its color. Mm -hmm. All right, so brown adipose tissue, so that's this is a type of fat that bur burns white adipose tissue. Mm -hmm. That's the stuff that we typically tend to think about when we're trying to lose weight, quote, lose weight or get rid of fat, is the white adipose tissue. Now, mitochondria generate ATP, right, the energy currency of the body. But there was another respiration not coupled to ATP synthesis that has a strong thermogenic effect. They thought that 
you know, this brown adipose tissue, it must be the ATP going on, the mitochondria doing this thing, but there was something else that they discovered. And this thermogenic activity, meaning that you are inherently burning more calories when it's working, and the compound that was discovered was uncoupling protein, which was responsible for inducing our bodies to upregulate energy burn without muscle activity. Okay. All right? So this is a little bit complex, right. but stay with me. So uncoupling protein has this ability to upregulate your metabolism mm -hmm. via its activity within brown fat. So I see that as it sets your metabolism free to flow. It unhitched the thing that was suppressing the metabolism you sound to like get in there and get down. It's not the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> All right. We're not unhitching, traveling. <laughs> Jed, move going, on down there. Yeah. All right, but I, I feel you. I feel you. Right, now, right. Am I am I on the right page <laughs> yes, with that? Yes. Okay. Now, I mean, it's something you've got the the years and 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 schooling, so it, I I needed to translate that for me. Makes total sense. Makes Great. total sense. Now, according to research from the Integrative Urology Center at New York University Langone Medical Center, the fats in coconut oil mm -hmm. actually activate brown fat in a very big way. Now, the study that was cited earlier, or the, the, the article, this so-called article right, right. that's bashing coconut oil, <laughs> the study they cited against coconut oil actually concluded that the coconut oil-enriched diet is effective in stimulating uncoupling protein 1 expression. There we go. During ad libitum feeding, which is basically at one's pleasure, <laughs> all right, eating as you, as you please. And it was also found not just when eating at one's pleasure, but also preventing its downregulation during food restriction. Because as you tend It'll to eat less, yeah. your metabolism has its tendency exactly. to slow down, right? Exactly. So it, this actually prevents that from happening. Sweet. Crazy pants, right? I love it. And this goes hand in hand with the decrease in white fat stores that were observed in this study. Absolutely, because Brown's at it. Brown now, and this goes it. back again, this was in the International Journal of Obesity and Related Metabolic Disorders. So right there in black and white. But we're not going to stop there. Hey, We're not going to stop there. Bring there was another on. study published in the journal <laughs> Lipids, okay, which was a randomized, double-blind clinical trial that involved 40 women aged 20 to 40 years. And this is where the groups received daily dietary supplements comprising 30 milliliters of either soybean oil or 30 milliliters of coconut oil over a 12-week period. Now, all subjects had tracked hypocaloric diet. So this means they're cutting away some calories. Okay. And a 50-minute daily walk. Sweet. All right, so this was tracked for everybody in the study. Now, at the end of the study, reductions in BMI, so the body mass index, mm -hmm. were observed in both groups. However, mm -hmm. only in the coconut oil group did they find statistically significant reduction in waist circumference. There we go. All right shrinking the waistline I'm by adding in that. coconut oil. All I other factors the same. Right. So everything else going on with the coconut oil, I get the hourglass. I'd say that's remarkable. <laughs> I'd say <laughs> it's think? remarkable. Yeah. So one of the other issues, though, that tends to come up is like with this fat, the saturated fat, isn't this going to contribute to uh, heart problems? Is it going to contribute to cholesterol issues? So I want to talk a little bit about that. I'm glad you're there. So there was this randomized double-blind study, again, published in the journal Lipids, that was cited by this wacky article I mentioned before. And they actually bashed this as well, talked about how bad. Matter of fact, let me go back and share this with you guys. I love that you, you know, you're not, well, that, that, that's something. That, can I just acknowledge you on that, that you don't just read all the things that are for and in agreement with what you're studying or presenting. Yeah. You also look at the other perspectives. Yeah, I, I go and look there. for yeah. the negative yeah. well, potentials as well mm -hmm. because we want to have a well-rounded opinion and mm -hmm. not just our opinion because we think it sounds good. Exactly. And, of course, you can find information to justify pretty much any decision that you make. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's always a way to color something, but mm -hmm. we want to have a well-rounded perspective that's going to benefit the most people. Absolutely. I've so, never found the Fruity Pebbles study to support <laughs> right. that, so... You got to holler at Fred Flintstone. <laughs> right. So this this is what they had in this particular article, that, that cholesterol is going to be raised. It says that it raises bad cholesterol levels when you eat coconut. And so here's what they said. Different studies have proved that coconut oil is loaded with saturated fat. True. Right. Which is basically a chain of triglycerides made up of saturated fatty acids. Regular intake of this plant-based food 
can raise low-density lipoprotein. Not so true, which you'll find out in a second. Or, quote, bad cholesterol level in the bloodstream, and it is extremely bad for your health, and you should avoid its use. (laughs) And then they have an article cited here that totally disproves what they said. It's like, again... Did you actually read this article because it makes you seem a little bit foolish? Or they figure we're we're not going to so read the article. So here's what the article exactly, yeah. exactly. They put that there to say, and and I mean, truth be told, we're blowing through all this data and all this information around us every day. Sometimes we'll see that link and say, well, it was cited. Mm-hmm. You know, that could be done. But to go that extra step, and I encourage us to do that, go ahead and click it. And read and see and 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 see how you may interpret or understand the information that's presented, and it, it may even differ from what you started. Right. There's really two parts to understanding things. Mm-hmm. One is the study. Yep. You know, and doing your own personal examination, which I I do actually do a lot of that for you in many ways because so of my bad. approach to things. So, you know, learning from different resources, from podcasts to books, audio books, lectures and things like that to have a well-rounded perspective. But ultimately, the greatest tool that we have in learning is personal experience. Mm -hmm. Nothing is going to teach you more so about coconut oil, for example, than you actually using the coconut oil and seeing what happens for yourself. Mm -hmm. Nothing can replace that. And I think that that gets overlooked a lot. And what creates a lot of the the schism out there <laughs> yeah. is when people are talking about things that they don't have that real firsthand mm-hmm. experience about because it looks bad on paper or it looks good on paper, yeah. right? Yeah. So we're, we're, again, moving through that and really sifting through and getting to the heart of these things. And so uh, back to this particular, again, randomized, double-blind study, and this was in the journal Lipids, and they looked at the blood work of the women after 12 weeks of coconut oil use versus soybean oil use. And they found that the coconut oil group had a higher level of HDL, so that's the quote, good mm-hmm. cholesterol, and an improvement in their LDL to HDL ratio. And that's what I would track for my patients is I would have them go and uh, you know get their get their panels done mm-hmm. and i would look at that number the ratio matters go. a lot right. more okay. than the individual numbers mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so and, right and there in black and white but all, we have to look at the other side okay. the soybean oil group uh-oh had an increase in total cholesterol an increase in ldl cholesterol an increase in the ldl to hdl ratio mm-hmm. and a decrease mm-hmm. in hdl I can't make this up. <laughs> right. Like they cited this study as if the coconut oil was the problem. They but meant to say something yeah. else, I think. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> we'll see. They just need a hug. Well, yeah. They need, a, me a- they need a coconut oil hug. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Get lathered up and give them a hug. Oh all right. Now, probably slip off each other. <laughs> but uh, oh, gosh. that's all it is. Now, <laughs> it's also important to look at the antioxidant capacity that coconut oil has in this context because it's not just the fact of the LDL particles being dangerous, but what about the free radical activity? What about inflammation in the body? That's really what lights the match, right? The potential of the LDL or LDL particles to be a problem, we need a we need something to spark it, mm-hmm. right? Because we've already got the match there potentially, mm-hmm. but the inflammation and free radical activity is really what sets that off. And this is a wonderful antioxidant uh, supporter in the body as well. Now, are there any potential drawbacks with coconut oil? No. <laughs> <laughs> Slow down. Slow down. Now, you, you might... From here, this is this is real talk. Okay. You might go overboard in the calories uh-huh. if you really work hard at it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> if you really work hard at it. <laughs> now, I say that with a grain of salt because as the research clearly indicates, people who eat coconut oil actually consume less calories overall and burn more calories overall. But you can take it in stride that a tablespoon of coconut oil is approximately 117 calories. And so jam it down 10 tablespoons a day. Like that whole <laughs> some is good, more is better is, is just, is just kind of silly. But plus it will likely cause you to create a crime scene in the bathroom <laughs> as well. Right. All right. So keep yeah, that in mind yeah. too. It's like the scene in Friday when Pops oh, no. is coming out spraying. <laughs> yeah. Don't go in there for about 35, 45 minutes. All <laughs> Do right. not. Go in there. (laughs) (laughs) So 
that's not a good idea to overdo it. Mm-hmm. All right, simple as that. Would it make a difference if it's in its solid state or if it's in its liquid state? And I say that yeah. because, you know, as we've learned to make healthier options for desserts, then we utilize coconut oil in those. So yeah. then that would increase It's going my to be pretty close. Okay. okay. It's going to be pretty close. But, and that is, it's one of the interesting things about coconut oil is that it can be this solid mm-hmm. and a liquid within this very small um, sphere mm-hmm. of temperature. And so generally it's recognized at 76 degrees Fahrenheit is where, you, where, you, where you'll see the melting point, mm-hmm. right? So the coconut oil can be solid and you put it into your palm and it will melt pretty quickly. Uh, so, but as you're using it for measurement, that's a great question. Right. It's going to be pretty much the okay. same. And, and for a lot of people listening, uh, <laughs> unless you're not utilizing an air conditioner, <laughs> you will probably see that it's going to be solid mm-hmm. year round, mm-hmm. right? But for those people who, you know, there's some people like in San Diego, when I went to hang out with John Lee Dumas, for example, just straight, just don't have an air conditioner, right, right. you know, because it's kind of, and shout out to everybody in San Diego, <laughs> yeah. kind of great weather Much all year round. for y'all. Yeah. And some people are like, I don't know if I could do that. This yeah. is the same. So, what? Um, That's a problem? I'm so willing to try. <laughs> you know, let yeah. me know if that doesn't work with my biology, but I'm let's willing do to a, give it a go. Let's do a foreign exchange program <laughs> right. with Jade. Let's do a double blind <laughs> whatever exchange study, and I'll be there. Oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. So, but they'll see that, oh, this is when that uh, summertime's rolling around, or that change of year is when the, the coconut oil starts to melt, mm-hmm. just sitting there in the cabinet. So, again, great question. Now, Thank you. let's finally put this to bed. Is saturated fat from coconut oil actually bad for you? Yes and or no. does it really raise your risk for cardiovascular disease? Now, saturated fats found in conventional snack cakes <laughs> and Twinkies and ding-dongs and ho-hos, cookies and potato chips, it's not the same thing. It's not the same. What kind of fat do you It's call not that? the same thing. It's, uh-huh. it's saturated fat, okay. but... It's just like with calories. Mm-hmm. You know, all calories are not, not the, same the same in how they impact your body. Thank you for that clarification. The fats that are found in those heavily processed foods simply do not interact with your body in the same way that coconut oil does. And there's a study, and this was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, looked at uh, two population studies. And this is a two populations of Polynesians living on islands near the equator to provide an opportunity to really look at the effects of saturated fat and dietary cholesterol and determining serum cholesterol levels and the potential for cardiovascular disease. Now, coconut oil is a chief source of energy for both groups. The toke allowance obtain a much higher percentage of energy from coconut than the puka pukans. Mm-hmm. All right, and I hope that I'm saying that correctly, but that's a 63% compared to a 34%. So the toke allowance are consuming 63% of their diet from coconuts. Now, wow. Vascular disease is uncommon in both populations. There is no evidence of the high saturated fat intake having harmful effect in these populations. So that's kind of a population study looking at some cultures with a long experience of utilizing coconut oil. But immediately the argument would be, well, they have, they probably have some other things that are canceling out the negative effects of the saturated the fat. Saturated fat. But so, I, I don't I don't want us to step over that because we were talking about the confusion that can happen with our interpretation of fat and thinking fat will then make us fat or have some pretty harmful effects. And again, there is a difference between the kind the way your body interacts with saturated fat. Just because you see the name or experience it as saturated fat exists, really understanding that it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the kind like you said, the ho hos and donuts. We've got to be very clear that there is some, um, right? Yeah, from a natural whole exactly. food. That's the key. It's from a natural mm-hmm. food or a food extract like coconut oil. We talked about the process and how it's made. It's a very simple process mm-hmm. that we have this uh, really remarkable plant fat. Now, with that said, this does not mean that other lifestyle factors don't attribute to their lower risk of cardiovascular disease because those things do matter. If you have a more of, active lifestyle, you're getting adequate sun exposure, those kind of things. But that cannot counteract. If coconut oil and coconut products are bad for you and, and there's a population that's eating over 50, 60% of their diet is coconut, right. a little walking is not going to walk yeah, that off. Yeah, it wouldn't make right? the difference. You can't walk <laughs> off that much bad food intake right, right, over if, <laughs> if it just wasn't true mm-hmm. that this food is actually very, very healthy for you. But again, we still do have to keep in mind that their diet 
their lifestyle, their genetic differences do still matter when we're comparing ourselves and our various heritage to what they have going on. But all of these things, again, we just need to keep in perspective. But now, key thing, that lifestyle part, and it wouldn't be a bad idea to have that in addition to your coconut consumption as the thing that makes, that's your guide. And so now that we've covered a little bit of the, the history of the coconut and some of the big arguments against coconut oil and related to you know, weight loss, mm-hmm. potential weight gain, <laughs> and also the cardiovascular issues, mm-hmm. which are the two big arguments I think that we have more of a well-rounded perspective. And again, this is backed by solid science, but then also looking at just history, historical use. This is a food source that's been used for thousands of years by very, very healthy, vigorous cultures. So it's, again, something that we have the opportunity to learn from, okay? Coconuts for, you know, 2,000 years of consumption, frosted flakes, (laughs) 30 years, right? right? right. And Tony the Tiger has had a lot of work done. (laughs) They are great. He he does not look the same (laughs) as he used to. He started taking coconut oil. It's smoke and mirrors. (laughs) So let's shift gears now, and we're going to cover 20 incredible healthy ways that you can utilize coconut oil. So So we're going to start off with number one. We'll start at the top. The most obvious one is to eat it. Yes. All right, so Just how do we go about that? Well, as Jade mentioned earlier, you know, it, we have that that change, whether it's a solid mm-hmm. or a liquid. And so what's the best way for us to actually get it into our bodies? Okay. And I'm, I'm a big proponent of pleasure, like getting this in in a way that you actually enjoy. So one of the ways that I like to do it, and this is something I've been doing for, again, close to a decade and a half, is blending it into hot beverages, mm-hmm. All right, so I would blend this into like mushroom elixirs and different drinks, things like that. And so you can actually, you know, make your make your tea, mm-hmm. make your tea beverage, or uh, maybe you're making coffee, and throw that hot coffee into the blender with your coconut oil and blend it all together. Fantastic. Because it's something that doesn't blend very well if you're just mixing it with the spoon. No. Unlike the unlike the MCT oil we talked about earlier, right. emulsified. Now that's a piece of MCT cake, right. oil, mm-hmm. but coconut oil mm-hmm. definitely use a quick blend to get it to combine a little bit better. So blending it into hot drinks. Mm -hmm. Also, a lot of people blend it it into cold drinks, Mm -hmm. which you have to mind your ingredients because it might create a little bit of uh, separation within your drink. You see, you've had that happen before? I've had it happen where (laughs) I was getting real jazzy. Once you showed us how to make smoothies back in the day, and we've got some years on us, and I'm like, yeah, and then toss in the coconut. But once you put the ice in there, and then the yeah. coconut gets all stuck to the side because it yeah. goes solid. Yep. There you <laughs> Trying go. Trying to get it off of there. So I you, mean, you almost need a chisel. You have to be a little more crafty <laughs> if you're blending it into cold beverages. Yeah. So that's why I like to blend it into hot hot stuff. <laughs> now, also, a great way to utilize this is making chocolates. Exactly. Right? Things that you keep, but you have to keep them in the freezer. Well, yeah, right. but they don't last very long once they come out. Exactly. So it's good. Uh, other all frozen... chocolate melts, baby. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all... <laughs> Chocolate melts. Yes, indeed. All right. Also frozen treats, you know, other little frozen treats, concoctions, things like that. And of course you can just eat it straight. Mm -hmm. And I've done that many a time as well. And um, a a little bit of an interesting way to make it more palatable Mm -hmm. is to add a little salt to it and just kind of, you know, a little, little dash of salt and just, wow, there you go. And and, and, (laughs) and eat it. (laughs) And actually the reason I'm saying that too is having a little bit of time to actually process it mm-hmm. with your mouth, to mix it with your saliva, because you're encoding that coconut oil with your own unique DNA and RNA, yep. and it's becoming more familiar with you mm-hmm. in and a unique way. And you told way. us once before that it's instant cell food, so yeah. uh, I like to give it a little time in there. But also, when you'll probably get into it, and I don't want to mess up the list, but before, yeah, I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I'm okay. pretty sure it's going to be on the list. That's If uh, it's not, then I'll add it as a bonus. That's unique. <laughs> right? <laughs> but, You've never seen that. Would you look at so, that? So, new things happen <laughs> every <waited>. day. Now, <laughs> let's move on. So, number one is to eat it. And this yeah. is just finding creative ways to mix it in with your with your foods. Number two is cooking. Yep. This is the hot way right now. Hot, hot cooking. I, I didn't even see it. Oh, you're so good. I didn't good. see it. Yeah. Because of its high saturation... Mm-hmm. Of the coconut oil, it's actually very resistant to oxidation. So we've got these other wonderful oils like olive oil, for example, but cooking with it might not be the best idea. It's so fragile that we keep it in dark glass bottles, right? And traditionally how it's used is like a finisher where you 
add it after the food is done or you're mixing it for salad dressings and things like that. But cooking with it, because of the uh, unsaturated oils that are in there, it's high likelihood of the free radical activity taking place in it, oxidizing. Right. So coconut oil does not have that issue. So that, number one, cooking with it for you know everything from eggs to veggies. You can, mm-hmm. quote, butter up your broccoli. You know, yeah. after you make your broccoli, steam your broccoli, and then add in some coconut oil and a little salt and pepper. It's great for Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts, Mm -hmm. uh, sautéing some spinach. We Mm -hmm. do that all the time as well, or kale, and adding your spices, you know, your onion powder, your garlic, whatever the case might be. So, again, just generally, quote, buttering up your food Mm -hmm. is a great way to use (laughs) coconut oil for cooking. What a coincidence. If you're buttering up your friend. This is the key. It works there, too. That we've already been talking about is that the quality we use matters so much, and that's why I get my coconut oil and the coconut oil that, my family uses from Thrive Market. And Thrive Market delivers us incredible, incredible products that they've basically done so much of the of the research and the vetting to get the very best products. Because again, like we've even covered, there's so much misinformation mm-hmm. out there and companies can even throw you curveballs and it's kind of hard to figure things out. And they've done a lot of work to have all of those compiled, but that's that's only step one. Step two is they deliver it at 25 to 50% off the prices you'll find at major natural grocery stores. You know, some of my favorite, I, I could like I could not believe when I saw something that I would pay twice as much for okay. right there on the site, and they deliver it right to my house. Well, that part makes For free. Sense. Yes. Right? Yes. With the free shipping. So if you're not utilizing Thrive Market, you've got to get on board. This is going to save you so much money. Mm-hmm. And they're, it's just amazing that they, and I was, you know, I talked to the CEO, and I'm just like, I don't know how you how you guys are around, <laughs> but they are just crushing it. Uh-huh. Like they've been featured in all this major media because they also have a bigger mission behind the scenes, you know, because every paid membership, they're giving a free membership to a low income family or a veteran that needs access to this kind of food. They're changing culture at the grassroots level. And it's so inspiring and just makes me so overwhelmed to see a company that's doing things like that. It just means the world to me. And so if you're not utilizing Thrive Market, Mm -hmm. head over to thrivemarket.com forward slash model health. And because you are a listener of the Model Health Show, they're going to give you 25% off of your first purchase and free shipping and a 30-day free trial Mm -hmm. to Thrive Market. Mm -hmm. This is the time to take advantage of this. We love it. Exactly. We get our toothpaste, our detergents. We get, you know, bars for the kids, nut butters, Coconut oil, just on and on. All, and right. Many of these things are 50% off. Same stuff I buy at my favorite grocery stores. Right. And it's just like so silly. Like when I when I actually go <laughs> and I, I don't, you know, anytime that I don't order, I go and buy it. It hurts a little. Like yeah. it reminds me like, don't do this again. Make right, sure you go right, to Thrive Market. Right. So head over there, check them out. Now, again, keep in mind that the prices are already 25 to 50% off because they cut out the middleman. Mm-hmm. They go direct to the company to get it direct to you. Plus, again, you're going to get 25% off of your first per- first purchase. So take action right now. Thrivemarket.com forward slash model health, and you are going to get hooked up. And they've got organic, non-GMO, gluten-free, paleo, sustainably farmed, right, you right, name it, right. they've got it. So head over there, check them out today. So let's move on to number three here mm-hmm. on our list of these 20 different ways that we can use coconut oil for our health. (laughs) Jade is making these little faces over (laughs) here. Now, another really interesting way that it can be used is as makeup removal. Yes. Oh my goodness. Let me tell about that. Typical makeup removers can be abrasive and put chemicals on your skin that can cause long-term issues. Mm -hmm. And two of the world's leading dermatologists, Anthony Yun, MD, and Carl Thornfeld, MD, say that not only is coconut oil safe to use when cleansing your face, and removing makeup, but it's also quite effective and offers numerous benefits to your skin. And its antibacterial properties are one of the great things that they Mm -hmm. talk about as well. But, Mm -hmm. however, it's important to only use coconut oil as you would a cleansing oil. No abrasive washcloths are necessary. And, you know, cotton pads, you can use something Mm -hmm. like that, you know, some organic cotton pads. Thrive Market. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> but simply liquefy you're getting the coconut oil. liquefy your coconut oil in your hands and when it's in its natural 
state, you can go ahead and rub it gently into your skin. Let me just tell and, how to use it for the fa the makeup remover. See, so when we have these big events and presentations, I have to go get my makeup. I don't have to. I go get my makeup done by a professional makeup artist. And they use heavier things because we're in front of big audiences and it needs to be that much more visible. So this stuff is really tough to get off. I mean, you could wake up and three days later, you're still trying to get the, the, the makeup off. And we're talking eyebrows to foundation. I mean, they set it in with spray. It's a, it's a big ordeal. But you get home after that that event, and you can even just put it, getting that, oh, those eyelashes mm -hmm. yeah, and that mascara eyes. off and the eyeliner, and you just gently rub your face, and then you can just wipe it off softly with a cotton swab. See, yeah. I lived this. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you describe it, but I I had no that. idea. Oh, we didn't even Sean, talk about this. Yes. That I, this was going to be one of the uh, the 20 and so hearing that story is just an affirmation. Absolutely. And that's specifically they talk about uh, heavy eye makeup mm -hmm. and being so great for that. So, so grateful, we should say. <laughs> rinse your face, warm water, yes. pat dry. So I've actually got an interesting story. Not okay. about the makeup. All right. All right. But this is when I was in California recently. Yeah. And I was at one of their awesome beaches. Mm -hmm. And this was the second time in a row mm -hmm. that I stepped in this tar. <laughs> All right. There's these little patches yeah, of tar that okay. can be mixed up in the sand. Yeah. And it is like impossible to get off. Like it sticks to it you. Your and I know skin. people listening have had this experience before. There are a lot of people listening that know know this this drama. And um, so I'm just like because the second time I was like, no way, because I was looking this time, making sure. Yeah. And sure enough, I go <laughs> to put my shoes on once we got back, uh, you know, to the parking lot. Yeah. And there she was, a tarred oh. up foot. <laughs> so I tried everything. I was trying to wipe it off. Mm -hmm. I went to a restaurant bathroom with soap and water. Scrubbing nothing. Nose. What happened was coconut oil. I rubbed the coconut oil directly, just rubbing it with my hand, and mm -hmm. it came off mm -hmm. so quickly. It was just remarkable. It's fantastic. So really great additional use for your mm -hmm. coconut oil mm -hmm. is as a makeup removal slash tar removal. The tar removal, which in <laughs> yeah, some right. cases, if you're not careful, check that makeup and where it's sourced because there may be some tar in right. it. But uh, a little tip, though, around your edges where your hairline is is, is often uh, a place that we can miss when we're washing makeup off if we've had a full coverage. And so rubbing a little bit there at your hairline and then wiping off is good, and that will keep your, your skin clear of gotcha. any buildup. Gotcha. There. Yep. All right. So now we're going to move on to number four on our list of the 20 healthy things that you can do with coconut oil. And number four is as a body oil slash uh, moisturizer. Now, I've been using coconut oil almost exclusively on my skin for at least half a decade. I love it. And, you know, sometimes people are like, you got the glow. Sean. You got the you glow. You got the glow. And shout out to The Last Dragon. Yeah. For people who don't know <laughs> what I'm talking about. At the end, when he gets the glow, man, it's like right. the best. Like, I for sure thought I was going to get the glow, <laughs> the Bruce Leroy glow. That's all right. Barry Gordy, The Last Dragon, one of my favorite Shout movies out. of all yes, time. Yes, me too, my brother. Now, also, this does take some consideration of your skin type. Okay. But automatically, you would think that oily skin should avoid an oil, but in actuality, oily skin actually needs healthy oils to calm the need for overproduction of oils on your skin. Aha, uh -huh, but there's that anti-bacterial um, property of it, yeah, so it can well, help yeah. keep that from being a problem. So this would be ideal for, obviously, for your body, for your body, All for your for, your body. for your entire body, but also for your skin. For a uh, nice percentage of people, it's going to be great for your facial skin as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you Tell your face. <laughs> Tell your face. You want, you want healthy skin? Tell your face. Tell your face. <laughs> now, the type and quality of coconut oil that you use matters here a lot. We're not talking okay. about the hydrogenated, bleached, terrible stuff that we mentioned earlier mm -hmm. that many conventional companies are putting out there in the market. And also they can sneak this stuff into products as well, say, oh, there's coconut oil in our, right. in our skincare product, but it's not the good stuff. So you can just actually use the coconut oil itself. And it's so cost effective too. You know, you just need a small amount mm -hmm. to cover <laughs> so much. Right, so much territory. So much territory. Well, for some of us, some of us have more surface area to cover, and therefore we use a little more coconut oil. <laughs> With pleasure. With pleasure. <laughs> now let's move on to number five. We'll pleasure. move on to number five <laughs> on our list of 20 healthy things that you can do with coconut oil. Number five is using it as a bath oil. 
Really? Now, my my wife today, she's just I'm so reveling in how good she feels. You know, she actually took a magnesium bath yesterday and she's just like, I slept so good, I feel so good. Like I haven't felt this good in so long. And adding oils to your bath water can be very, very great for your skin. Just make your skin feel smoky smooth. Yes. Smoky smooth. <laughs> That's what my mom used to say. Make it smooth. So now you can have your skin feeling absolutely wonderful. What you'll use is three to four level tablespoons of coconut oil. No need to go overboard. Right. Or you might not be able to get out of the bathtub. Well, that and your plumbing. I'd be slipping around. I'd be thinking. Yeah, All right, so <laughs> three, three to four level tablespoons. Okay. And also you'd go with um, maybe a fourth of a cup of Epsom salts. Or okay. we use the uh, deep soak from activation products, mm-hmm. you know, that magnesium product. But a relaxing bath can help to soothe your muscles and treat your skin. So you can choose also one of the many other essential oils that are out there to add to your bath as well. Oh, yeah. uh, coconut oil is a great carrier, which we'll talk about in a second. But, you know, there's eucalyptus, oh. lavender. There's some good choices, and coconut oil helps to round all of that out. So let's move on to number six on our list of 20 things, 20 healthy things that you can do with coconut oil. And the next one is something called oil pulling. Yes. Now, this name is a little bit weird, and list. this is something that's been done for thousands of years, mm-hmm. and it's a common place in Ayurvedic medicine. But I think a better name for it would be oil swishing. Oh, all right, because this the term oil pulling can sound like you're pulling toxins out from your soul. It's yes. something weird, you know. But there was that. one. Well, let's look at some of the science. There was okay. one study that was completed in 2008, and this was a randomized controlled triple blind study oh, well, that found that oil swishing led to a significant reduction in Streptococcus mutans count in plaque and in saliva. Mm-hmm. Now. They concluded that oil swishing can be used as an effective preventative adjunct in maintaining and improving oral health. Oh, yes, sir. That was the one that I was going to bring up when I said, I know it's on your list, and there it is. So before I actually take a tablespoon, um, just eating eating a tablespoon mm-hmm. of coconut oil, I'll do the, the pulling, as you say, swishing first, mm-hmm. spit that out, and then I'll go in and take the, the, the spoon full. <laughs> so, tablespoon full. Got it. So that's actually, I'm so glad that you mentioned you spit it out. Absolutely. And then got a new because yeah, no, you don't you're going to be the, picking up yeah. a lot of of uh, stuff yeah, when you're doing the, the swishing. <laughs> so there's also, this was a study published in British Dental Journal. Mm-hmm. And coconut oil was found to strongly inhibit the growth of most strains of streptococcus bacteria, including streptococcus mutans, which is a major, major cause of caries. Ew. Now, the study had test subjects to use oil pullings for 10 minutes in the morning before brushing. So that's one to two tablespoons, swish it around for 10 minutes, and then spit it out. And absolutely spit it out. Maybe not in your sink, but if you do, uh, down the drain, make sure, like if you were with your tub, you know, there's enough dilution that it wouldn't disrupt right. your plumbing. Right. right. So make sure you run some water. Mm-hmm to help to flush it out or just go and spit it in the trash can mm-hmm. or outside. What, <laughs> wherever. So, what if it provides something for your yard? <laughs> number 21. Number 21. That's just, that's just weird. Yeah. That's just weird. Gardening, hey, compost. Hey, hey, little, hey, little rose bushes. I got a surprise for you. Right. I've been oil pulling. <laughs> hey, now, Ms. let's move on. Number seven. Hey, Miss Parker. Okay. <laughs> Number seven on a list of 20 things, 20 healthy things Mm -hmm. that we can do with coconut oil. Number seven is to use it as a lip balm. Oh, yeah. Now, let me just share with you really quickly what's in the most popular one out there. Mm -hmm. Lay chapstick. All right. (laughs) Chapstick. Now, in this popular chapstick, we've got things like acetyl alcohol. We've got methyl parabens. We've got Red Lake number six. All right. Saccharin. And all manner of things that you probably can't pronounce, Mm -hmm. all right? So, again, the great thing about coconut oil is that if you can't eat it, you probably don't even want to put it on your skin. And if Mm -hmm. it's on your lips, you are actually going to be consuming a lot more of it than uh, than you would actually suspect. And with acetyl alcohol, you will be using a lot of it because it dries your lips out as soon as you put it on Right, and it's a solvent. It pulls things Uh in. So for some people, applying coconut oil right to your lips will be just fine. But for some people, it might kind of sit on top of your lips a little bit and not get that deep nourishment that you're looking for. And so you might want to make a little bit of your own 
natural lip balm, which is simple as mixing about a tablespoon of coconut oil, a tablespoon of olive oil, and about a fourth tablespoon of honey into a small bowl. And that can create this nice balm, this nice paste that you can utilize. All right? And that recipe is from out there on the interwebs. You can just go to Dr. Google and look, at, look up um, recipes for mm-hmm. making lip balm like with that. coconut oil. So that's another way that we can utilize it. Again, for many people, they could just put it directly on their lips to get a little bit of love there. But that's just one of these 20 ways. Let's move on to number eight. Number eight way to utilize coconut oil is as a burn treatment Mm -hmm. or first aid. All right. We all have to have, especially if if you have kids All right, if you're into extreme sports, whatever, we all need some first aid access. But I use this for my son all the time for my sons and for scrapes and things like that because it's antibacterial. That helps as well. But it's also kind of just soothing and cooling when it gets applied to your skin, it just kind of takes away some of the abrasiveness of a scrape. Now, the Indian Journal of Pharmacology found that coconut helps to accelerate wound healing, and research also found that there is significant improvement in burn, burn wound contraction. All right, so it helps this thing to kind of get closed up. So that's another way that we can utilize coconut oil. So we're going to move on now to number nine on our list of 20 healthy things that you could do with coconut oil. Number nine is using it as a lubricant. (laughs) So this is in the bedroom. Again, coconut oil is simple and natural, and OBGYN Jennifer Gunter, MD, says that even though there haven't been any studies looking at the safety of coconut oil as a lubricant, so far it seems very safe, and I haven't had any patients report any negative side effects. Plus, it's natural, preservative-free, and affordable compared to traditional lubricants that you would find in the drugstore. Mm -hmm. And she says that in my practice, many women who experience vaginal dryness have chemical sensitivities or vulvar sensitivities reported that they actually really liked using the coconut oil. Absolutely. And as an added bonus, coconut oil contains natural antifungal properties, Mm -hmm. so it could actually help to reduce the risk of infections when using it. Yes, and let us say that instant cell food can be a bit of a stimulant, just saying. And there it is. (laughs) Now, this is important is that this is not to be used with latex, though. Oh, for sure. Because it may weaken the latex and actually increase the risk of breakage. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want anybody name, you know, we're naming our kid the model health baby (laughs) because you said use coconut. No, I did not say that. This is for, um, you know, not using latex. Yeah. Okay. But so. if you if that's what you meant, congratulations. Con- yes, congratulations <laughs> on that. We're on it. Now, and as an additional note here, we want to stay away from lubricants with glycerin and parabens, as these products can break down into irritants that are not safe for the reproductive that's system. Right. And again, there's so many, there's so much misinformation out there, and people are just taking things because they're out there. This appears to be approved by the FDA. Mm-hmm to use this particular lubricant, but it has things that can actually mess with your endocrine system, you know, and this is going into a place. Yeah, because if you, I mean, if you can't put it on your skin or wouldn't put it on your skin or even put it in your mouth, you wouldn't eat it, then you don't want to put it in your cha-cha, in your lady parts. (laughs) Yes, yes. I totally, totally agree because Mm -hmm. really if it's on your skin, it's in your body and that is actually in your body. So Uh, with, we want to start looking at our personal care products. And we're going to do an entire show dedicated to this, you know, from our toothpaste to our lotions and all these different things. Coconut oil is just one solution, but it has so many different uses, which is why I want to focus an entire episode on this and give you some things that you might not have considered before in ways to use it. So let's move on to number 10 here. Number 10 on a list of 20 healthy things that you can do with coconut oil is as a mouthwash slash teeth cleanser. Now, we've already covered a little bit with the great potential with mouthwash as the oil pulling, but as a t- tooth cleanser, mm-hmm. clean the toothes, the toothes <laughs> you can actually help you to, first of all, avoid some ridiculous things that are found in conventional toothpaste like fluoride. On a recent episode we did with Dr. Isabella Wentz, uh, number one New York Times bestselling author, and she really broke down just some mind-blowing facts about fluoride and how Fluoride is directly implicated in thyroid disease. Mm -hmm. It has a tremendously negative impact on thyroid function. Also, um, the fluoridation of your pineal gland, Mm -hmm. 
things like that. So it, start, it, it has this really interesting ability to hold up shop in certain parts of your body right. and can cause some real problems. So we need to be aware of that. But we were promoted that fluoride is good for your teeth. Mm-hmm. And again, we're going to do an entire show on this subject matter. But if awesome. you happen to not catch that episode, we'll put it in the show notes for you to go back and listen. So you're just not like, huh? What are you talking about? Because there's fluoride, there's fluoridated water yeah. out there that's specifically marketed for kids. For babies. Give your kids this fluoride mm-hmm. water. Mm-hmm. And come to find out this actually has some really negative impacts on many different organs and tissues in our body. So we can avoid that by utilizing coconut oil. Also, uh, sodium lauryl sulfate. And according to the Environmental Working Group's Skin Deep project, where they're looking at cosmetic safety reviews, they found that sodium lauryl sulfate is linked to irritation of the skin and eyes, organ toxicity, developmental and reproductive toxicity, uh, neurotoxicity, endocrine disruption, and possible mutations and cancer. That's this great. is not a small thing. And this is in so many of our products, our personal, personal care products. Mm-hmm. But again, it's kind of hiding in plain sight. And now, again, we can wake up and start to recognize these things. Now, companies are shifting over a lot more, becoming aware of this, especially as the public is demanding better products, are using coconut oil and MCT oil to make toothpaste today, which is really interesting. But this is something that you can whip up at home if you chose to do that. And this is just another opportunity we have, not saying that this is something that I do, but I have utilized coconut oil for mm-hmm. cleaning before. Absolutely. But what I do want to give you guys, though, is something you can whip up at home, and you can check out the instructions on how to do this from Wellness Mama, Katie Wellness Mama. We'll yes. put a link in the show notes page, so head over to themodelhealthshow.com, and she's got a little recipe for making your own tooth I soap. I love it. All right, so we're going to move on to number 11 on a list of 20 healthy things you could do with coconut oil. Number 11 is to use it as a sunscreen. Oh, okay. According to the Environmental Working Group, Approximately 75% of commercial sunscreens contain toxic chemicals that are linked to cancer and disrupt hormones. This might be another newsflash. Again, entire episode will be dedicated to this uh, coming up soon, so make sure to stay tuned for that. But the bottom line is we need to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. And SPF 100 plus uh, sunscreen actually blocks out over 99% of the UVB rays. And that's actually a little bit bit of a problem because the UVB is what helps your body to produce vitamin D. So is that the best idea that we're applying this, like plastering ourselves with this sunblock and then going outside like it's all good? Mm -hmm. Because it actually, many of these do allow in a different spectrum of light, the UVA, not as efficiently, which is the one that's more linked to skin cancer, ironically. And so coconut oil itself actually has an SPF naturally of about 10, Mm -hmm. which is pretty good for a natural substance. But the key here is to get adequate sunlight for yourself, but not to get sunburned. That's the key. So you've got to take into consideration your own complexion. Mm -hmm. For some people, coconut oil, like that's what I use personally, and I don't get sunburned. You know, I have a little bit, a little bit of a darker tone, a little bit of a, a little bit of a color, a little caramel to me. Uh-huh. And so I don't get burned as easily, but I can get burned. I've been sunburned before, but mm-hmm. since I've been using coconut oil and actually consciously ratcheting up my exposure, like, you know, we're about to go on a family trip, for example. So I'm making sure that I'm getting more time in the sun and not just go out. I'm getting oh, like yeah. five minutes of sunlight a day to two oh, hours exactly. a day, right? That's and smart. then wondering why my skin is peeling off. Exactly. That's dangerous. Yeah. This yeah. is That's not... Harsh. This is not this is not dangerous. We want to again be conscious of this. Ease your way into your sun exposure because what a tan is, that's built-in sunscreen. It's built-in sunblock. Basically. So your body's building up that ability to be in the sun mm-hmm. more often. So you want to take your time and and build that up. Mm-hmm. Well, the cool part about the coconut oil on the flip side is that it's a it's great for bronzing. Like while it's mm. a great sunblock, you won't get any cuter, toastier, beautiful skin. With that going on, it just makes it all even and smooth. It's wonderful. Uh, I see how you're looking at yourself. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm feeling myself. At my own I'm feeling myself. <laughs> all right, let's move on. So number twelve yeah. is actually using it as a sunburn treatment. Now, coconut oil has these wonderful saturated fats we've talked about, uh, which are lauric acid is a big component of that, and other unique combinations of fatty acids that actually heals sunburned skin and relieves some of the inflammation and it reduces the discomfort that's caused by peeling and excessive dryness of the skin and also can nourish and and rehydrate the skin as well 
And one of the things that I've seen is that it soothes the burn skin and helps it tighten, like what we talked about earlier when we, in relationship to burns, mm -hmm. preventing lasting damages such as wrinkles, tanning, discoloration, et cetera. And also its antioxidant activity helps to eliminate the free radicals associated with the sunburn. So another great use for it there. So let's move on to number 13 is utilizing coconut oil as a massage oil. <laughs> Obvious, we've talked about the benefits in nourishing the skin, so you've got that right there. Plus, no artificial toxic ingredients. So avoid, avoiding the random craziness that might be in oils that would be used for massage. So that's another great use for it. Number 14 on the 20 healthy ways that we can utilize coconut oil. Number 14 is for cracked heels. Yes. Cracked Don't heels. Don't even get me started. All yes, right. sir. So I remember the movie Boomerang, <laughs> Eddie Murphy. You know, he had this real stipulation of problem she had that when she had movie. hammer time in her shoe. <laughs> All right. We don't want to necessarily have hammer time in this shoe. Okay. Well, there's not going to be any foot shaming on my watch. <laughs> if you've seen the picture of Shaq's foot out there going around oh, on the interwebs, yes. you would wonder. Mm -hmm. You would wonder how a person could love him. <laughs> but they did, and they do. They did. I love Shaq, even though your foot looks like a Shaq. It looks like. <laughs> it looks like. You know? Well, you know, they had yeah. the, those poor uh, footsies had to take a beating. Yeah, with with what the level that he's at. Oh my goodness, and it's, the, it's more the than sheer, that. It's yeah. ne it's been some neglect. there's been some neglect <laughs> there. All right, there's been some clear neglect. Oh but cracked heels. So what we do is massage in the coconut oil mm -hmm. and then slide on some socks. Yep. All right. So you don't want to massage in the coconut oil and just go walking around your hardwood no. floors <laughs> yeah. because you're looking like you're on some ice. Been there, done that. There. <laughs> so throw on some socks and it really helps to deeply mm -hmm. nourish those uh, cracked heels and just the skin on your feet overall. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to number 15. So number 15 on our list of 20 healthy things that we can do with coconut oil, shaving. Oh, okay. You can actually shave, get a great shave with coconut oil. And I found this out on accident. And this was pretty recent because okay. I just didn't know that this was even a thing. It's kind of actually inspired this episode. Uh. And so I was at uh, a friend's place traveling on the road and they had everything that I could possibly need but no shaving cream, mm. right? And I forgot to bring mine along. And so I'm like in a pinch. And so I'm like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And so I went to Dr. Google and I saw coconut oil come up. And so I was like, okay, I'll give this a shot. And so, you know, get the skin nice and, and, and warmed up and, you know, wet your skin. Because you would think like the oil and the water. Right. So I'm like, should I just put the coconut oil straight on? No, just kind of do as you normally would with when you're going to shave. And so right. this is with a razor. Right, right. And so did that. And put on the shaving cream, and the shave was so smooth and easy, and it was just great. Like I was, it was awesome. <laughs> and so I, I did that, and I told my wife about it as well. And so then I started hearing all these different stories of like women even shaving their legs using coconut oil. Like I had no idea that that was a that thing. thing yeah. So you can utilize it for shaving. Mm -hmm. And did you actually, put the hot towel on your face after that. I. What? This, it wasn't a barbershop thing. You're like trying to get the whole barbershop yeah. picture. Well, it sounded like you had an experience. So just, <laughs> I did. I did. But I didn't just, you know, sit back in the chair and put the towel on my face. Yes. That's right. Have a good day. Treat that fella right. So Treat yourself. That's another way that we can utilize that. It's Love really it. great for blocking razor burn and those kind of things. So let's move on to number 16. Mm -hmm. And we can utilize coconut oil as a hair conditioner <laughs> and moisturizer. The fats in the coconut oil are incredibly beneficial for conditioning hair. And today, many there's so many products today that are utilizing coconut oil. And there are, quote, natural hair products. Mm -hmm. And there are also the conventional ones are shifting gears and adding in coconut oil as a feature, a highlight. Mm -hmm. Probably not the good stuff, right. but this is a great way to condition your hair. So people that are interested in that, just give a search on Dr. Google. You can get a lot more information about how to do that. So let's move on to number 17. This one is for the babies, all right? 20 healthy things we could do with coconut oil is to help to treat diaper rash. Oh. This helps to reduce redness, uh, itchiness, and pain. And this mm -hmm. is something that's many, many anecdotal stories out there. Mm -hmm. And there are some clinical applications that we're seeing now as well. Plus, proactively using it on your baby's skin can help to reduce the likelihood that the rash will return. That makes perfect sense. So another viable makes option Makes me want to have another baby to protect a little body. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. 
Number 18, and this is actually going to skip back to shaving with the <laughs> coconut oil <laughs> and the fact that this is great for treating and preventing ingrown hairs. Okay. So there's two ways that this happens. It makes a great spot treatment for ingrown hairs or razor bumps by providing that barrier between the blade and your skin as you shave right. and not making it worse. And also it provides much needed skin treatment to prevent the itchiness and irritation after shaving. All right, so there's two ways that you can go about that. So it's just great mm -hmm. if you're somebody who shaved, whether it's your 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 beard or your head, whatever the case might be, your pits. <laughs> your... <laughs> um, applying some coconut oil can be great after shaving. Yeah. All right. So now we're moving on to number 19. We're at number 19. Number 19, and the 20 healthy ways that we can utilize coconut oil is using it as an antibacterial. Mm -hmm. So like a little bit of a, a hand san sanitizer. Now, coconut oil is a rich source of lauric and caprylic acid, which are well known for their natural antifungal and antibacterial properties. Typical hand sanitizers are very harsh and use alcohol that kill off bad and good bacteria, which can leave people more susceptible to these, quote, superbugs mm -hmm. and these super strains of pathogenic bacteria. So there's this natural balance. You know, we want yeah. to be clean. But also, let's be real, though. Sometimes you do want the harsh stuff, well, like sure, your hands sure, have been to sure. places but, and doing right. some things. But just in general, like the daily, you know, just kind of, you know, here or there washing your hands with the conventional soaps. We want to upgrade those. Right, right. You know, we definitely want to upgrade the soaps that we're buying and using things like in a pinch. You know, you've got your, maybe a little coconut oil thing uh, in your purse or whatever. And you just want to, you know, give your hands a quick once right, over. Right. And but, it's, yeah. And just like you had cracked feet, you know, this is. Great for helping to keep your hands, your hands and cuticles moisturized because those soaps are yeah. harsh and they draw out any of your natural moisturizer, moist, moisture, <laughs> your natural moisture and condition your hands. And it's just a great way to kind of keep them preserved. So the bottom line is utilizing the coconut oil even after washing your hands with some higher quality soaps to, you know, for the moisture, moisturizing, taking care of those cuticles mm -hmm. like Jay talked about. It's just a much better idea. But I also want to share this. The Journal of Medicinal Food said that coconut oil has been found to kill the yeast Candida albicans, which is a common source of yeast infections in humans. So when I'm talking about it's, this is clinically proven antibacterial, antifungal, mm -hmm. antiparasitic, antiviral, anti-Candida as well. <laughs> so there's many applications with this really remarkable food. Let's move on to number 20. And this is our final one on 20 healthy ways that we can utilize coconut oil is for stretch marks. What? For treating stretch marks. To a degree. Now, my wife, <laughs> when she was pregnant with our, with our youngest son, she utilized co cocoa butter mm -hmm. <laughs> and Definitely coconut oil that daily during her pregnancy and the recovery after. Okay. Now, before we go any further, I have to make the statement again. Stretch marks are not something to be ashamed of. Please understand, I love the new Kendrick Lamar line. <laughs> Show me something natural. I want to feel some stretch That's marks. Right. That's what I said to I have no degree. problem. Right. Mm -mm. Right. No problem with that. Mm -hmm. But just, you know, the individual, the individual person having uh, that idea about how they want their body to look and the skin to be, um, treated and the appearance of the skin. If there is a way to improve that, I want to share that with you. So absolutely, utilizing these tools, so you know, high quality cocoa butter mm -hmm. from real cocoa, mm -hmm. right? From real mm -hmm. that's it's cocoa butter. So this is like the fat, right, from the cacao, and coconut oil can be a great idea. And beyond the cosmetic part, I mean, what your body goes through in carrying a child, just what they, it's stretch marks. It's called stretch marks for a reason. It's a mark of the stretching of your skin. And to treat that with the coconut oil just to maintain the, the tone and condition of your skin is just another thing that makes sense. So that, you know, I mean, that's a pretty extreme change from right. where you were to where you're going. Yeah. And just so that it can recover and keep everything aligned. Right, nice. keeping helping the elasticity. That's the thing. Of the skin. Yes, yeah, Sean. So it's that is well, you just said a great word, which is conditioning the skin to help it mm -hmm. for that that purpose. And so Cat Williams said it best: the stretch marks. I have no problem with them. I love them because it just means that you were big and got little, or you <laughs> were little and you got, got big. big. All right, got That's a little a great thicker quote. than a snicker. <laughs> That's a great quote. 
So, but this can be utilized to treat your skin as you're, you know, if you're, if you're losing weight, you know, if you're going through a pregnancy, if you've put on some weight and even if you're working to put on weight, you know, there are a lot of people who are, who are doing the booty building right now. Sometimes you're doing both. Maybe you're putting it on, taking it off, (laughs) putting it back on and taking it back off. So just make sure that we're utilizing (laughs) These various uh, applications for coconut oil. There's so many different so ways awful. that we could take advantage of it. Now, again, what to look for? Make sure that you're utilizing these incredible benefits that we've covered here in this episode. But we want organic, virgin coconut oil, not the refined stuff, mm-hmm. not the stuff that's been treated with, you know, that's ble- been bleached, treated mm-hmm. with hexane, mm-hmm. hydrogenated, things of that nature. We just want the real good stuff and. That's why I'm saying, again, make sure to take advantage of the incredible deals over at Thrive Market. You're getting 25% off of your first purchase, plus free shipping, plus a 30-day free trial. And this is something that we utilize year-round as a family to just, it's it's absolutely mind-blowing how much money we save. And yeah. I like, like, like I said, the very first time that I used it, I was just like, my jaw was on the floor. It's like, I've been paying for this all this time. I had no idea. And so... Those guys are truly amazing and doing a great job. So head over to thrivemarket.com forward slash model health, and you're going to get that 25% off your, your first purchase. And I would highly encourage you grabbing yourself some coconut oil, and they've already screened out to get the best quality products for whether it's coconut oil, whether it's uh, snack bars, whether it's toothpaste. So you've got so many different things to go through. And all the different food items, you know, they got the paleo categories, uh, gluten-free, no matter what it is you're looking for to create a healthy body and healthy life. They've got something for you. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning into the show today. This episode is highlighting a food that I was scared of. Mm. I actually was terrified of this food when I first began to look at some of the research, um, you know, about a decade and a half ago. And because it was so outside of my paradigm, Mm -hmm. I was becoming more awake to the fact that fats were not all bad for me like I had been taught in my university setting and by trusted advisors. So I got that. But then to see, like, are you sure? This is saturated fat. I'm just going to. And when I first ate it, I was like, just basically watching the clock, like, okay, I should be passing out any time now, right? (laughs) And it never happened, you know? And actually, I got healthier. Mm -hmm. I got leaner and leaner as I continued to use it over the years. And And it's just something. butterscotchy. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) And it's just something that is all always we always have this there in our cabinets for our family to use and i use it so many different ways and we share 20 various ways that you can use it and utilize it for your family so i highly encourage you to check it out and just add more options add more things to your superhero utility belt for you to be the healthiest version of yourself because that's what it's all about i appreciate you so much we've got some amazing amazing guests and show topics coming up so make sure to stay tuned take care have an amazing day and i'll talk with you soon